Hey guys, I'm the Fact Freak and welcome to today's deep dive into Father Bennett. Now, as Matthew 1815 said, if your brother sins against you, you must go and tell him his fault. And point out his faults, we will. Including taking money from vulnerable people, misquoting the Bible, general manipulation, as well as failed businesses, and his strange, strange path that he says he was on from God. Now, of course, don't forget to like, comment and share this video to push that message out. And let's face it. The power of Christ compels you. The power of Christ compels you. First of all, this is the community church that Father Bennett was baptised in and preaches in. Now, they have a YouTube channel which is linked to their Facebook and I'm going to show you a particular video on here uh, which I don't think a lot of you will have seen of Father Bennett explaining why he's on TikTok. But something changed. One what changed? Please tell us. One time I went to pull the card out and what I now know to be God, but I didn't at the time. Okay. Said, share this on TikTok. <laughs> and I just did. Went to work, came back and looked and it had 10,000 views. I had like 120 followers. It had 10,000 views and hundreds of comments. And these comments were like, I am so grateful that you shared this. This is exactly what I needed to hear. So this is what he said brought him to TikTok. A message from God through cards that his mother would leave in the toilet. Hmm, interesting. So, obviously that church there is quite closely linked with Father Bennett as he joined their team and obviously, like I said before, gets baptised there. However, I want to draw attention to the names that they have chosen here. We have Father Bennett and Apostle Dave. Now, people have asked about whether Father Bennett should be calling himself Father and we'll get into that. But it doesn't surprise me that when somebody calls himself Apostle, um, that they are supported in creating false titles for themselves. I mean, the Apostle basically states, the ruling over Apostles, is that Apostles have to actually have been the band of disciples from the beginning and were with Jesus Christ during the time the Bible was written. I can't study God today and decide to call myself an Apostle like this guy. Now, of course, Father Bennett is going to explain how Jesus saved his life. Let's see what he's got to say. Talking to people you've probably never met, seen before, <laughs> and maybe been part of our Zoom community, why don't you say hello and tell us a bit about yourself? Hello, my name is Samuel Bennett. I am the younger brother of David Bennett, who you may or may not know. I began a journey. Now, the reason he said that is because his brother is also involved within the church. <laughs> with God, with Jesus, when I was very young, but I didn't really identify anything like that, any, any of it to do with Jesus at all. Which completely contradicts his message in the video previous, where he said that he just suddenly came across a message from God that he should begin preaching and take it to TikTok. I didn't really know who he was, I didn't know anything about him. I went through a very colourful upbringing, <laughs> like add a few more colours to the rainbow kind of colourful. And that actually put me in a place of complete hell, if I'm honest. And there was pure hell in my heart, in my mind, in my gut. I was anxious. I attempted suicide many a time. I addicted to many kinds of drugs i was addicted to anything that could take me away from what was going inside of me um, like gambling which uh we'll talk about later because he's still doing that then i i kind of, i had children and 
things start getting real, you know. <laughs> it's not just about me anymore, you know, I've got this child and, and people will tell me I'm a great father and I didn't feel it, I didn't believe them. Um, but I could see in my children that I, something was going well, but I just didn't think it was from me. And I think that that was the first moment really where I started to open up and accept that maybe there is something else for me and maybe I'm not all bad. Because I really did believe I was. I, I was wondering want to just introduce you to how I become part of the church. Well, I'll do that in a minute, but tell, tell them how you got saved, really. Oh, yeah. okay, hallelujah. <laughs> so, God started to, I started to get fed up with people, really. Um, I was fed up. You're still quite intolerant to people now, so. With having to filter what I said, I was fed up of having to sensitize everything to other people's situations so i couldn't really express myself because i would upset someone else in their situation or i couldn't celebrate what i was doing because it will make someone feel bad about what's not to celebrate and what they're doing and all of this was just this back and forth thing so i just started painting and i realized i could express everything i wanted to and walk away from it and then people could walk past it and have a conversation with it themselves. And it was like, brilliant, I didn't have to get involved with any humans. <laughs> so first of all, I detached from humans, apart from my children, of course. And then I started to... Make videos on TikTok? Like, the story changes all of the time with Father Bennett. Um, not really a surprise, is it? So, of course, while we're talking about stories changing and false titles... Let's talk about Father Bennett's title of, obviously, Father. Now, this is footage of his baptism, and I want to point out to you the date of the baptism, or at least the upload of this video. The, in 2022, that would suggest that he obviously hasn't baptised, or been baptised for very long. Uh, now, let's talk about who gets to be called Father in that sort of sector and obviously aside from the name itself priests are referred to as father priests because a sign of respect and because they act as spiritual leaders so by donning the name father well father bennett believes he is a leader uh is that making yourself a bit of a false prophet now, I don't know about you guys, but if I came over onto TikTok or social media, took on the name Father and acted like I was some sort of expert, I definitely wouldn't be misquoting the Bible. However, let's listen to him try and answer the question, are tattoos a sin, according to the Bible, using Bible quotes and meanings? Are tattoos a sin, according to the Gospels, the Bible, the Word of God? Let's have a look. This is Revelation. Revelation 19.12. Revelation 19.12. And you're going to be so shocked with this. Share with a friend. Sharing the word is good. You don't have to. But It's also good for your algorithm on TikTok, isn't it? Is that just a coincidence? Nah, it's probably just a coincidence. It is good. His eyes are like blazing fire. And on his head are many crowns. I accidentally liked that. So that, that was embarrassing. Uh, right, so he says that 1912 is, his eyes are light, blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. Let's have a look. His eyes are like flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems, and his name are written that no one knows but himself. Interesting. Doesn't seem like the correct quote, but anyway, let's see what else he has to say. But, let me say it again. He has a name written on him. He has a name. Jesus has a name written on him. He has a name written on him. I can't. There's nothing in this Revelation 19.12 that says that at all. On him. That no one knows but himself. So, Jesus has a tattoo. No, he doesn't. <laughs> The Bible verse that he just quoted, uh, basically, this is the reasoning behind it, which, as you can see, has absolutely nothing to do 
with tattoos, absolutely nothing. And actually, most people will come up with this when it comes to tattoos, that a lot of people have issue within Christianity over tattoos because of this quote. Ye shall not make any cuttings into your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. So there's no clear message, because some people take that one way, some people take it the other, but there definitely isn't a message in the Bible that says that God has a tattoo. My God, would you like one of these t-shirts ordered? But of course, when he does get the uh, quotes right, it can be along the lines of supporting sexist messages throughout the Bible, like this one. Women should remain silent in the churches. They are not allowed to speak, but must be in submission, as the law says. If they want to inquire about something, they should ask their own husbands at home. For it is disgraceful for a woman to speak in the church. Now, surely if you read something like that and you don't agree with it, even if you are following that religion, you can interpret it differently. Obviously, God was against a lot of things that modern culture have obviously uh, changed around on for the better and should be. Uh, and a lot of people have taken moves to support that and say that obviously it's about how you interpret. Uh, but Father Bennett, no, he, he agrees with it. So women can't preach? No! You should be helping. You could be a deacon. So my old pastor justified putting a woman as an elder. And now he's actually personally affected by it because somebody wanted to move into the 20th century. And he'd done it deceitfully by deceiving the whole church and making out she was just a helper. But then he said to me, ha ha, yeah, well, she's an elder. Ha. I'm out of there, Satan. A deacon is a helper to the pastor. The perfect position for a woman. I haven't actually watched this full quote. I can't believe what I'm hearing. To be silent and help. Perfect position for a woman of God anyway. Not a woman of Satan, of course. She'd be very upset with that, wouldn't she? She wants to be on stage with the microphone, getting all the glory. Complaining about all the men not being up there. The fuck you coming at Beyonce for and Taylor Swift? Leave them alone. Leave them alone. What the fuck is he even... I don't even know what he's talking about now. I've just completely lost it. Like, it's up to him how he interprets the teachings of the Bible and he's decided to interpret it in this sort of horrible, sexist, misogynistic view towards women. Absolutely abhorrent and appalling thing is you have no problem approaching women especially vulnerable women when you want money and you approached a woman quite a while ago for ten thousand pounds and that woman came forward and spoke about you now i haven't seen this myself so i'm going to react to it with you guys but let's listen Right, so this is when the person spoke out. Now, the person closest to Father Bennett with the blonde hair on the bottom there is the lady herself. Now, let's see what was said. I'm gifted yeah. online using religion, do you know what I mean? I wasn't, I wasn't comfortable with it at all. And yeah. I, was, I felt like I was under a spell with him. Um, oh. I had this discernment that it wasn't right, and I, but it took, me, it took me months to break out of it. Um, but I didn't like it, no, and one of the reasons... Unfortunately, we're going to show after this that she has been taken back under this spell, as she puts it. Um, it's interesting that she used those words. That's why we all left, was because we were more and more uncomfortable with yeah. what he, he was being online. But no, I, I think what he's... This is why I'm speaking up, because I'm yeah. actually concerned for his own salvation, because I feel that he is using Jesus in a way that Jesus would overturn his table. I see him making mm -hmm. a casino out of that church, basically. It's like he's got a church there, right? And it looks like a, a fucking game show. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's how I feel yeah. when I look at it now. It's, like, it's not like a church at all. 
Nicole, the most important and thing really is... And doesn't need to be on the ranking. Him, mm, losing yeah. the, him losing his salvation would be the most terrible thing to happen, really, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. I would hate that. I would hate that. And that's one of the reasons why I'm speaking up, because I actually would like to see his TikTok taken down yeah. to stop him. As you because say, I would like to see him in head. It's a lot of people that have the same opinion. You know what? Mm, what? I watched him perhaps three, four times. The sermon, I'm not saying I'm Mr. Perfect, but the sermon told me this guy's fishy. This guy's something about this guy. Yeah. And it wasn't just his appearance, although he did yeah. seem as if he was styling himself on, on Jesus, but... It just was something about the guy. I thought that's not right. That's definitely not right. Yeah, that's your discernment. You know, that's your discernment. And many, many, many people have that same discernment. Many know, people have it. Yeah, Nicola, I know many. people who have watched yeah. them once. I know people who have watched them once and thought, oh no, 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 not this. And that is the opinion of Father Benner. A lot of people think that he's concerning. His behaviour is strange, and that he is using his uh, position within a church his philosophies uh, to basically make money and cash out um, for himself. And of course, later on, the lady talks about scamming and the sort of scams that she knows that Bennett is involved in. You can see that he's manipulating people out of money. He calls the money they seeks to but a ministry should not have just one person leading it and they, they should have transparent accounts right exactly. and mm. people should, there should be a team managing the money and like we said recently he gave out 800 over 800 bibles one month and that's an absolute lie like he lies a lot he is a compulsive wow. liar and the things that he said about me the stuff that he made up about me and so many people believed him it was heartbreaking i had i was witnessing all the comments i was witnessing him doing it to me and they all so starting a hate campaign against somebody who speaks out shock believed him and i lost so many people as well friends because they believed that i was all of these things he was saying i was and i wasn't doing the things he was saying i wasn't being the person he was saying i was being it was disgusting it was cruel it was it was evil I just want to point out just how animated this lady sounds, how passionate this lady sounds, because the video that we're going to watch coming up, uh, where she has gone back to Father Bennett, it couldn't be more the opposite, um, more unnatural. It was evil, and I kept quiet, and I cried, 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 and I went really quiet, and now I'm like, oh, fuck it, I've got to speak up. You know, Nicola, I've got to speak up. Yeah, good on you. I've got to speak up. Nicola, I, I, uh, I come for me, possibly, but... I applaud you for Thank walking you. away from that. And another thing is, the most important thing to you is for you to guard your heart. Uh, but this, yeah. guy, this guy, you know... And the thing is, like I say, somehow Ben had got her back. Now the lady moves on to talk about how she was quite close to Father Bennett. She wasn't just somebody on the sidelines. But anyway, that didn't work out. I, I think it's just scratching the surface. Because, because I tell you something, a woman, a, yeah, I had a woman to be married, because as his best friend, I was the closest person to him for about 16 months, or almost 21 months, right? And I know how much I suffered as being that woman in his life. And a woman who married him would suffer. And she would have to be really obedient to him. Really obedient. Like, he would have to have... <laughs> I'm going to say, I've just noticed the comment section. Ask somebody to contact the fact free. Full authority. There's times I've heard him in the lives, um, like shouting in a way that an abuser would shout at a, a victim i've heard it my daughters have witnessed it as well it's wow he's he's actually quite scary he scares me what he's capable of so of course that lady said all of that about father bennett and father bennett had a few things to say himself i mean the lady did accuse him of taking the money that she had given him and use it to gamble which is definitely a sin. Now, of course, the Bible itself doesn't call out gambling as a sin. However, they do say for the love of money, it is a root of all kinds of evil. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and perceived themselves with many pangs. Now, that's interesting because that also could be 
put towards the gifting system on TikTok and how Father Bennett obviously begs for those gifts. But anyway, let's see what he had to say about the gambling accusation. Apologies, guys. The audio quality of this clip is not amazing. I've tried my best in edit. Let's go. I didn't gamble the investment money. And in fact, I didn't even gamble that money. I gambled my own money. And what I actually said to her was the money's gone into the same bank. I gambled a few hundred pounds over the space of a period of time when I was struggling and I was in my human nature. So I confessed that to my sister. And, um, and I actually said, look, I can't hand on heart say it wasn't that pound that I used because it's all... Doesn't this just sound like deflection, deflection, deflection? What a load of absolute crap. What an absolute load of crap. If you're going to start some business off that was a charitable thing about your teachings with God, then why are you using the same bank account that you gamble with? Come on. In the same bank? I couldn't, I couldn't say that. You need to pray harder, uh, Father, because you ain't getting out of this. But, you know, the, that's what happens when you confess to a devil. Oh! You know? Why are you giving it back? Because I think it's the just thing to do. Her daughter was... Hang on a minute. <laughs> Hang on a minute. You're now calling the lady a devil because she dare challenge you. Interesting. ...was deceived by her own mother. So was I. Oh, wow. I'm going to be saving up to get my four kids out of one bedroom. But, in, but instead, I'm going to do what the right thing and give back to this poor young lady. But she didn't gift you the money for that cause, so why are you bringing the cause up about your kids? Me too, not a little child, who was deceived by her own mother. So I'm going to put that right. Even though her mother won't, I will. You know? How's he trying to flip this around to him, looking like the good man? But God bless you. But don't gamble. Gamble in self-harm. It really is. My life was wretched, just like most of the people that are, are struggling in here. And to be honest, I'm actually thinking about, because of all of what Nicola's doing here, I'm going to pray on it, and I might actually get some solicitor's advice. Because what actually happened was she was going to give me 10 grand for nothing just to say thank you for what you've done for me and my mum. And I was like, oh, that's nice. Like, you know, you don't have to do that. I did that for free. And they were like, no, I want to. And then when they were like, oh, we've got doubts. You still didn't have to take it. <laughs> like, for you to have had the money, you had to take it. I was like, well, look, I don't want your money. That's not what I want. I don't want your money at all. Not at all. That is true, Jody. You know that's one hundred percent true. I was on the phone to you saying I will not receive anything from you unless it's one hundred percent in faith. And then I and I actually offered you because you like music, Jody. I offered you in exchange, and I didn't guarantee there would be any return. I would love to know what the exchange was for ten grand. But I said because you're doing this for me, maybe I could do something for you because you like music, and maybe you can head the music department in the the ministry when we start that. And I'll give. Oh yeah, it's always something that's going to come in the future with more investment and more money and more time. But I can't do it now, but thanks for the money. Yeah. Give you some shares in the company, we're just starting oh. it. Your shares are worth nothing. <laughs> and that's what we ended up doing. How does this not seem like a scam to anybody? Come on. We did sign a contract, yeah. So we signed a contract, which actually means I don't have to pay anything back whatsoever legally. Not at all. But I will because it's the right thing to do because Jodie was deceived by her mother. Because her mother messaged me and said, I feel bad because I made Jodie give it to you. Well, she didn't say made. I told her to, which is so... an instruction from a mother. To a, to a daughter and I'm sorry Jody, that that's the way it went I was deceived you were deceived but I will give you it back which you know I'll give you it back because you've had the emails saying that speaking to my business partners about it yeah yeah I mean just believe him yeah you know he's gonna I mean come on but then obviously we had the biggest 360 
from Nicola, who said that obviously he defrauded her and everything like that. I'm going to react to Nicola's video. I've heard so much about it uh, because it sounds like somebody's been completely brainwashed by some sort of cult. Uh, but I've not actually watched the full video, so let's let's try and see if we can do that. Now, I want to remind you all that she said it was like being under a spell. So... I'm making this video today because I have spoken evil again. Against the Lord, and I want to repent. Against the Lord? That's interesting. And I say this because recently I... Because you want your £10,000 back without any hassle? Spoke against a brother in Christ in a way that would only be seen as evil. Not if you're telling the truth. Not if you were telling the truth. And which would displease my Lord and not only him, but as I created carnage. I caused other brothers and sisters to fall and stumble. No, what you did was you caused other people to go, actually, yeah, he was always asking me for money. Yeah, actually, I agree, he does this, that and the other. Uh, that's not people falling from grace, that's people coming to their senses. And while it was unintentional, it... It definitely was intentional, I've got to say, you can't be saying that. It was definitely intentional, you wanted to tell people did happen and so I accept full responsibility I ask for forgiveness I mean if this does if we heard how animated she was before right now listen to her I regret very much what happened and if I could turn the I just got a bloody gun to her head clock back and do things differently I most certainly would I also really do want to make amends and make sure that nothing like this ever happens again, that no one is ever hurt from my own flawed and weak character. Oh, she's now referring to herself as weak. Lovely. I wonder who put that in her mind. I speak particularly to my Lord and Saviour because only he can give forgiveness. I mean, that's true, so why are you grovelling to Father Bennett? Thank you, Lord. To my brother Sam. And this is Sam Bennett, Father Bennett. Father Bennett, as he's known on this app, particularly. Particularly, yeah. I didn't listen. I didn't take your counsel. And I fell. Oh, but he took your money. Spectacularly, as I fell, I brought other brothers and sisters down with me. This is just... And I accused you of things. And in doing so, I lied and I deceived. That is something that I accept is true because the Bible tells me so. I lied and I deceived. I, mean, I said that's true because the Bible told me. How did the Bible know that you were lying? That doesn't make sense. I'm sorry that I lost trust. I'm sorry that I talked in a way that wasn't of the Lord. Well, that is true. Like, the uh, the effing and jeffing definitely isn't. Yeah. And I have repented repeatedly. Taken time out. How? And spent much more time with God. You've spent more time talking to Father Bennett. In prayer and reading the Bible so that I can be the person that he would want me to be. Now, I know I do a lot of deep breathing sometimes, right? Because I, I, people who know me know I had pneumonia. So, like, <clears throat> so now and again, obviously, I've got issues. So, now and again, you can hear me breathing. But if you listen very quietly, I'm going to mute my mic, you can hear breathing in this. And it's not her. It's somebody holding the camera. So I'm just here to publicly say, because I have publicly spoken out, 
but I am very sorry. And I you hear what I mean? There's definite breathing there, right? I take everything that I said back. In relation to allegations I've made. Pretty serious allegations. And he talked about them. He clearly knew what you were talking about. Towards Sam about scamming my daughter, Jody, out of a sum of money. Why wouldn't you say the sum of money? Because if you were to say the amount, people would be like, oh my gosh. I also choose to sit in trust that this is not what happened. That she did sow a seed into something that is slow growing. Oh my God, she's not getting the money back, is she? She's not getting the money back. She isn't. But growing. It takes a oak 80 years to be able to produce its first acorn. The fuck is that got to do with giving someone 10 grand? towards a website. I, I hate to tell you that, you know, setting up a website doesn't cost that much money. And I trust in God's timing and I trust in what is unseen. That's what faith is. So you, because you, hang on a minute. So you trust that he's doing what he says with the money, even though you've seen no evidence of that. Is that basically what that means? Like, honestly, if this doesn't seem like a video, that it's pre-planned, pre-rehearsed, then I don't know what is. You've got to remember people of different faiths learn religious texts, they learn Bible verses or texts, you know, from other other religion and other teachings and songs and hymns and all that sort of shit. So if you think that she couldn't have memorised the majority of this and have it written for her... So I choose to believe and trust that she sowed into good soil what i true to believe and trust is that you and i mean this in no way offensively at all are a vulnerable lady who has been manipulated and father bennett has a contract uh, over this money which means that legally he doesn't have to give you any money back so you are jumping through his hoops hoping that i don't know that you'll get somewhere with it it's absolutely, it's just off the reservation. It really is. So yeah, it is all about manipulation of money when it comes to Father Bennett. I mean, look at this. Now, this is somebody sending a gift, a very large gift on TikTok. It's worth quite a bit of money to Father Bennett. Father Bennett has uploaded this himself onto his profile. It is very proud of this. Let's have a look. I believe I'm ready, says Josh. Heavenly Father, as somebody has sent a gift for a blessing. As you come and roar like a lion and the prancing lion flees, we welcome you as you baptize Josh in your authority, your character, and your purpose, Lord Jesus. So does that not send out a message to your viewers that if you send a large gift, then you will get a blessing. Christ of Nazareth, have your way. Your there are people who would be desperate for that blessing. Way. Father, Father, your kingdom come and will be done. Josh, open your heart and, inv and your wallet. invite Jesus in. Because Jesus is knocking on your heart right now. And he wants the three digits on the back of your bank card and your current address and postcode. Saying I'm here, my child. I'm and this is just where it starts with the manipulation. Um, now, if people who are watching this don't also watch TikTok, now TikTok have something called a weekly ranking in the UK. And it basically is the ranking for who has earned the most virtual money, i.e. gifts, uh, on the platform now would you believe it that this guy 
this lovely Christian guy, um, he wants to get God to number one on the weekly rankings. You heard me right. I'm going to do the weekly ranking, remember? So we're aiming to get Jesus to number one. It will be our best opportunity. Because that's what Jesus wants, to get to number one in the UK rankings on TikTok. Opportunity to do it on Monday. It resets at Monday, 8 a.m. That's when I go to my other job, so I've got more resources to give freely. Um, but as soon as I get back, it will be about 4 o'clock, maybe 4.30 p.m. English time. We'll come live, and then we'll just flood this. You've got to remember, to get to number one in the weekly rankings, you're talking... He would have to earn thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds. With our cheerful gifts and put Jesus up to number one. So yeah, that was the end of today's deep dive. And I can see there being a part two to this one in the near future. A real look at manipulation and almost cultism by Father Bennett. False titles and even him breaking those commandments. Anyway, if you did enjoy the video, please make sure to like it and share it so everybody knows the word of the fact freak.